Hello students. Welcome back to my channel, The Goddess of Econ. Today's video is part two of my lecture on Hotelling's Lemma, which has to do with producer theory in economics. If you haven't watched part one, yet, please go back and watch that video before watching this one. Okay then. All you students out there, please follow, follow me. In the last lecture video, you have seen that, if you differentiate the profit function, or the maximum value function, with respect to R, you get a factor demand function for K, multiplied by negative 1. Quite a neat result, wasn't it? Let's find out if the similar result holds if we differentiate the maximized profit function with respect to W, as well. Okay, let me go over this as slowly as possible for your better understanding. The partial derivative of pi star with respect to W is price times partial derivative of Y with respect to K star times partial derivative of k star with respect to w, plus, price times partial derivative of y with respect to l star times, partial derivative of l star with respect to w, minus r times partial derivative of k star with respect to w, minus w times partial derivative of l star with respect to w minus l star. Again, it may look long and confusing, but please note that all that was used was a simple chain rule. I am sure most of you students can do this exercise yourselves, if you have basic knowledge in calculus. Next, let's factor out the partial derivative of k and that of l, as we did before. Then we have the following. Again, the expressions in the parentheses should look familiar to you. They are the same as the first order conditions that we have derived before, to find an interior optimum. At the optimum, we know that these are simply equal to zero, therefore simplifying the right-hand side of the equation. What this means is that we are essentially left with minus l star only. So, in summary, if you partially differentiate the maximized profit function with respect to W, you can get a factor demand function for L, right away. Okay. Now we are left with only one more exercise to do. Do you see what that would be? Well, we have dealt with R and W so far. This time, let's differentiate the profit function with respect to the output price, P. Then we have partial derivative of pi star with respect to P equals Y plus price times partial derivative of y with respect to k star times partial derivative of k star with respect to p plus price times partial derivative of y with respect to l star times partial derivative of l star with respect to p minus r times partial derivative of k star with respect to p minus w times partial derivative of l star with respect to p now as before let's factor out the partial derivatives of k and that of l so here we have first order conditions once again in the parentheses. As they are equal to zero at the optimum, we are left only with y, as a function of k star and l star, on the right hand side of the equation. Again, quite a neat result, isn't it? And as k star and l star are essentially functions of r, w, and p, the right hand side of the equation can be rewritten as y star as a function of r, w, and p. This means that y star here is the optimal quantity of output produced given r, W, and P. In other words, Y star is the supply function of the firm. Note that Y star is a function of both of the input prices as well as the price of the output. So, here you are. What Hotelling's lemma states is that, if you partially differentiate the profit function or the maximum value function with respect to the price of an input, then you can derive the factor demand function corresponding to that particular input, multiplied by negative 1. Also, if you partially differentiate the profit function with respect to the output price, P, then you can get the supply function of the firm. So, Hotelling's lemma can be simply thought of as a result in economics that relates the supply of a good to the maximum profit of the producer. It was first shown by Harold Hotelling, and is a widely used concept in producer theory. Another way to explain Hotelling's lemma is that, if the firm makes its choices to maximize profits, then the choices can be recovered from the knowledge of the firm's maximized profit function. Also, I would like to add that Hotelling's lemma can be proven by using a mathematical result called the envelope theorem, which I hope to cover someday in another video. Sometimes, Hotelling's lemma is presented by economists in vector notation, which can be quite confusing and difficult to digest for some students. However, I believe my presentation of the material today would suffice for everyone to grasp a full understanding of this concept. Again, economic concepts can sometimes be annoying and confusing, but they will become more interesting as you get to learn more and more at the advanced level. Some students may even find it as sexy as I am someday. So, keep on studying. Lastly, 
May the goddess of Econ bless all those students who like and subscribe. Ha ha.